Fantasy Footballers DFS Podcast, coming to you from PristineAuction.com Studios, with your hosts, Jake Seeley, Chris Meany, and Joe Holka. Welcome, Foot Clan! It is the Fantasy Footballers DFS Podcast. DFS for the rest of us. We're here to hopefully help you win money for week four, and hopefully you've been winning money already. I know last week is some disappointment in some areas. Joe and I were talking about before we came on the show, Chris, which, by the way, follow Joe at Joe Holka, Chris Meany at Chris Meany. I'm at All In Kid. I'm assuming you guys know that by now. But just in case you have any additional questions, late lineup changes you want to make in DFS, we'll try to help you guys out. But, Chris, we were talking before, is my lineup would have been really good if not for Sammy Watkins. Hint, hint, hint. I think I might go back to the well one more time this week. Yeah, well, why not? I mean, <laughs> it's the Chiefs. So you know they're going to drop 30 points, maybe even in one quarter. It, you know, yes, last week was pretty good for us, I feel like, it, at least for me. Kenny Galladay let me down. That was the big guy. I should have had more Marvin Jones. It was Galladay. Like, we were all over Mike Evans was a lock, right? We, we had said on the show, can you believe it that he's, like, Godwin is more expensive than Evans? Like, let's get on Evans is coming. So, like, that was good. But there are a couple down moments, Galladay for me especially. Yeah, crazy. Joe, I don't know. Hold on, Joe, like I got to tell you this. Thing. It, I don't know if it was a lock, but we, we talked about, I think I talked about him on every single show I was on last week and then still didn't play him and then decided to fade Nagel, and Nelson Aguilar. So that was kind of how my week went. Well, I was about to say is uh, Chris can at least say good on the Aguilar because I just want you to know this text message string we had from one league. He said, all I want is Galladay in the lineup and I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very true. You know, something has to be said for fading chalk. Like, you know, what Joe had just said with Aguilar. Like, sure, when when somebody like that is is very trendy in the industry, you always want to kind of back off them. But I was in a few tournaments where Devin Smith was more owned than Nelson Aguilar. And I thought that was just, in my opinion, I just thought that was crazy. I just didn't think that, Smith was going to get that kind of usage that Aguilar got. But um, yeah, I mean, again, when I see somebody that's just so cheap like that, I mean, you don't necessarily have to be different for the sake of being different. Sometimes chalk is okay. And if you're a tournament player, you want to be a little bit different. But, you know, fading him obviously was the wrong call. Oh, there's definitely going to be some chalk this week. For sure. And I kind of feel, yeah, let's, so why not just jump right into the cash games and let's talk about it because. Yeah, let's do that. Let's talk chalk. Straight cash, homie. All right. I mean, we're starting at running back. So what might be the chalkiest chalk of chalkness is, are we doing Wayne Goleman? I mean, like, that's really looks like what might be the one because it's, hey, his price isn't reflective of being a starting running back. And it's the starting running back with really no competition behind them. This, things could change by Sunday, but the Giants haven't signed anybody. They promoted Hilleman, who was an undrafted free agent, who they cut at the last cut session before the season. So Elijah Penny's a fullback. It is the Redskins defense. Uh, is this the chalk you just got to plug him in because he's so cheap? It's only for cash. I'll let Joe take that away and, and wonder if he's going <laughs> to take him in tournaments. Face. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I personally can't get there in cash. I get it, Jake. $5,800 Fandle, 46 on DraftKings. Talk a lot about a free square. Nobody, you make great points. They didn't really bring anybody in. He's going to get a workload. But for me as a cash game player, I don't want to put all my faith into Gallman. I wonder what Joe's thoughts are in tournaments if, you know, if you're going to fade him because he probably will be popular. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy that the, the price makes sense, right? I think he's going to be just piled on. He can be the the free square for the week that everyone wants to find every single week. Um, I mean, I, I guess I have some issues with Wayne Gallman as a player, but trying to, I guess, I guess, separate that for the running back position is super important. I mean, if we can project him for his, what, 18 touches or so at 4,600, I'm right. sure he's totally fine. But um, at this point, I think I'm going to try and figure out other ways to go. I think the, the kind of big difference on this slate is that there's – really not as much to pay up for that we normally have at running back. Like Saquon's not on the slate. We have a couple of like Zeke's not on the main slate. So there's just all these things that, that normally we would go to. And it's pretty much just Christian McCaffrey all the way up top. I, I think he's going to be probably the highest own running back. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah. Uh, uh, close to it. He's maybe. got probably one, two ownership. I would see. Say. Do, you, do you think so? Uh, Cause I'm looking at it and it, you and I talked about before we came on the show, Joe is Dalvin cook. People are going to immediately fade in because it's the bears. I have people, hey, Chris knows this. We have people in seasonal leagues. who are like, ah, should, should I trade him before this game? Because it's going to be this game. And like, 
uh, wh- what are we going to get to the point where, hey, guess what? Maybe Dalvin Cook's in the conversation of matchup proof. Uh, like he hasn't been just amazing and only the best running back in football for the first three weeks. But I feel like the chalkiest one is Aston- Austin Eckler still. It's one more week. It's one more week and it's the Dolphins defense. Yeah, I like Eckler. And I think be- I think more people are talking about Justin Jackson because we saw last week with Pollard a blowout game. Justin Jackson's probably going to get a little bit more play. And if that means we're going to get Eckler with a little bit of a lower ownership than normal coming off his worst performance and to your point Jake maybe one last week of touching the ball like 20 times in this offense I'm interested in Austin Eckler I mean how could you not be against the Miami Dolphins I mean I like Eckler fine I I think that that Cook is an interesting one right because his price at this point like at 8300 I think at at least on DraftKings you have to take a step back is this guy I mean Point per dollar, if we want to even call it that at this point on this slate, I, I don't know if he's really in the same category as someone like Christian McCaffrey for just a little bit more. Um, Austin Eckler, at least we know he's going to have those high equity touches. Like it is Miami, of course. So maybe there's a little bit of blow up factor there. But who knows? I, I think that those those touches for Eckler are, are really interesting at, at a similar price point as Dalvin Cook. I, at some point to me, Dalvin Cook is going to be a little bit priced out just because of the way their offense plays. And I don't know if the the ceiling can remain where it's at. I mean, people forget he's broken some massive runs throughout the first couple of weeks as well, even dating back to the preseason. Like when when his efficiency kind of comes back to life, I'm, I'm a little bit more worried about Dalvin Cook. I don't think he's going to be super popular at that price, though. I think a lot of people feel the same way. See, and that's the thing is I actually think that's part of his game. That's why I love him so much. I think he deserves to be. I think people should treat him as Barkley, Ezekiel Elliott, Alvin Kamara, Christian McKay. Like he deserves to be in that conversation. And this isn't to look back, but this is a seasonal conversation that Chris and I had. And I know we've got asked the same question a lot. Is people always like, well, who's the running back? That's not the number one. That could be the number one. And I think Chris agreed with me is we were saying Dalvin Cook for a lot of it. The biggest question was always health. And I think that it kind of, it's kind of weird because we see this a lot in sports and I'm talking about like fantasy football, just especially in general is like people always want somebody to do something and then they do it and they pull back. Like the best example was Devonte Adams for a few years. It was like, could he just catch the ball? And then he catches the ball and ends up being one of the best wide receivers. All of a sudden people are like, well, I don't, and I'm not talking about this year cause he's been off to a slow start, but you understand the point is like people get what they want. And then they, they take a step back. Yeah, I, I think he's matchup proof. I think you're dead on. He deserves to be in this tier. I mean, Joe brought him, brought him up last week as somebody he and I we all agreed with him is that he's he wasn't priced high enough. Like his price had jumped, but we didn't think it was still where it probably should be. I mean, this is somebody who comes into week four. He leads all backs in fantasy points, rushing yards. He's fourth in carries. He's involved through the air in the passing game. And yeah. we know what Minnesota wants to do. All right. So I want you guys to guess something. Who has the higher projected ownership as of today, Dalvin Cook or Justin Jackson? <laughs> probably Jackson. The way I've heard with Jackson on Twitter this week, it's are people Jackson. really going there this week? Like, really after that? After, after I mean, I'm asking the question, Joe. What do you think? I the Jackson. That's nuts to me. Have you guys looked at David Johnson in 6800? He seems like the most missed. No, oh, hold on, hold on. Before. Answer the question first. Answer the question first. Who do you think? That's how I feel about the question. I'm just dismissing it. <laughs> <laughs> well. I just wanted you to answer it because you both would have been wrong because it's tied right now. But that's the point. Like that's that how absurd ludicrous. it is. I'm with that is crazy. it is ludicrous. That's why I'm playing Austin Eckler. <laughs> like that's it, why I'm playing Dalvin Cook. <laughs> yeah, both of them. Absolutely, both of them. We've been talking about them since week one. Both of these guys. Uh, I think you just continue to play them. Why not? If you've played them for the first three weeks, <laughs> you've had success. I feel like everyone knows. I just, knows, love, like, I just love Joe's. Like Joe's. Like I'm not. No. Well, I'm, did you notice David Johnson? <laughs> I, I can't. I don't blame him for for wanting to avoid that ludicrous question. I don't think we need to waste any more time on that part of it. Like we got we have so much to talk about today. Let's not waste any time on him. I feel like so. Yeah. I I do like the David Johnson price because he's a thousand less. Who I think somebody else that isn't chalky, but I think should kind of be in that conversation now is Mark Ingram. But then you say David Johnson, he's a thousand less. Yeah. David Unfair, Johnson, just, he feels like, I, I don't know if he's a lock, but 6,800, like at what point do we like start to kind of uh, go after that? Just, we talk about all these other underpriced Arizona guys, like in, I get it. Like they're at home against Seattle. Like I, I think that at this point, like we've seen him be a little bit more active in the passing game, which is, is nice to see. We haven't had that ceiling game from David Johnson yet, but this team is just running so many plays that, I mean, I'm almost always going to like the game environment for, 
Arizona and Seattle, like not a great team total by any means. And they are a slight underdog, but hopefully like a lot of times we'll see some of these pass catching running backs even have their ceiling games when they're slight underdogs because they just get a little bit more involved in the passing game. So uh, I'm interested for sure at 6,800. If everyone's going to go to Mark Ingram, I'm, I'm definitely going to be on the David Johnson side of that. Well, that's the thing is uh, over on DraftKings, it's a little tighter, but on FanDuel, it's ridiculous. With 6,800 on both sides, Chris. Yeah, yeah, $6,800 on both sides. You're right. I, I do like Ingram. We've been talking about Ingram enough. Uh, you know, again, you play him. He just he found the end zone three times again last week. Like he's just. He gets it done, but I, I agree with Joe. Like for for David Johnson, I love his usage in the passing game. It reminds me a lot like David Johnson of a couple of years ago. I mean, he has two games with at least six catches. I, I chalk up week two in Baltimore is just a wash. Like it's just a tough team to run on, and it's you know you're dealing with the rookie quarterback in that environment. Uh, and you know Murray did okay in that game, but David Johnson wasn't a factor, and he left at times with with the uh, with was a wrist injury. I think he was in and out of the some of the plays. So a nice bounce back spot for him. I think he touches the ball fifteen to twenty times, in which. Joe said is, is a high pace game. All right. So one more before we move on to the wide receiver, let me ask you guys this. Has Derek Henry reached cash consideration for the fact that even on a down week, his just likelihood of rushing in for a touchdown is so high? I think so. I, you know, especially on Fando, if you're looking to pay into that, you know, not get into that first tier, you're going to save some cash with two guys in Mac and Henry. I treat them both the same. It's just, you know what you're going to get with them. You're going to get about 15 carries on the ground and it looking like T.Y. Hilton may not play in this game, probably a little bit more usage for Mac. I like him slightly more than Derrick Henry, but Jake, yeah, I mean, it's just, these are the guys and there's nobody else in that offense that you can really trust. Cash, cash games, though? I, I think you're out of your mind. Derrick Henry in cash? He doesn't catch passes. Really? I would go I back know. ahead I, of him I, in cash. I, I think he's fine in, in GPPs if you want to go there, and he has kind of that ceiling game. But, like, his price is it's not like he's 5K. Like, he's pretty expensive for a guy that doesn't catch passes to me. Am I wrong? That's my one no, problem with playing him in question. tournaments. That's my one problem playing him in tournaments because he doesn't catch passes, and, and, and I feel like he just has to be perfect. So that's why I feel he, like he's more like a cash play because he scores double digits even when he only gets 40 yards. Yeah. That's it. I, I, yeah, you don't have to like him. That's why I asked the question. Probably a better chance of him really. hitting his floor than his ceiling. Fair. And that's certainly fair. So, all right, so let's talk wide receiver then. Uh, are we immediately, you, you joked about it before, Chris, are we immediately headed to New York and Washington? That's where we're going, just like stack everybody in that game because their prices are still so low? There's there's definitely a few guys I like there. Yeah, Sterling Shepard I thought was was pretty good. Jones leaned on him you know, last week. He's got a really good matchup. I mean, both, you know this, Jake. We talked about it on Monday. Both of these teams are just so pathetic defensively. I mean, nobody has allowed more, more yards. The Giants than, are worse. Yeah. Sure, but they're both one and two against uh, in fantasy points right. against the wideouts. It's Washington and it's Giants. They can't stop anyone. Terry McLaurin is is probably going to be pretty pretty chalky. But even Paul Richardson, I'm I'm intrigued with. I mean, he had a big game. They're throwing him the ball like it's it, it's so these guys are cheap. They're point, not appealing, but that's that's a high total. It's almost at fifty. To your point, Chris, which people will see is what I do in my APA column for the footballers, which under the DFS pass, if you want to save 10%, just put podcast, you get 10% off. So number one and number two, as you said, Giants and Redskins and adjusted points allowed. Number three, by the way, is the Saints, which is just because of how bad Marshawn Lattimore has been. But so league average is 37.4. The Giants and the Redskins, 53.7 and 53.2. Averaged adjusted fantasy points per game allowed the wide receivers. We're, we're, uh, we're going at this game, Joe, right? And let me ask you this with that question, Joe. What the hell is DraftKings doing that McLaurin's price is still where it is? Well, it doesn't affect uh, last week's game, right? Based on when it was that primetime game. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I was just more scared I mean, to say his name than anything else. I, I think I've gotten it wrong <laughs> every time I brought him up. Uh, but yeah, 4,500, he's, he's going to be the chalk at wide receiver. One, one thing I will say about this time of year, and I think it's probably a mistake I made last year, is a lot of times we find these big pricing inefficiencies early in the year more than more than later. Just I, I think that the Nelson Aguilar thing last week, it's not like he's this like, massively high a dot like variance guy that was like projected to be highly owned like we could project him for a ton of target share there he was a very good play uh, so for myself fading him in in single entry made some sense from a game theory perspective but i think that a lot of times in the beginning of the season like a lot of times you just make got to make the best plays yeah, I think it's a good call and a nice strategy tip for people out there who do play in single entry is that's the time to fade them. I mean, if you're playing in a contest with three or four different lineups, then I think you have a share. But I mean, I think it's smart in the single entry to fade the chalk. 
Yeah, he is actually tied with Keenan Allen, the highest projected ownership as of right now. Keenan Allen and Terry McLaurin, well, they're, they're up there. Well, so are you, we just say Paul Richardson, is Paul Richardson more tournament than cash? I mean, this price yeah. would scream cash because he's going against the Giants, but just for the fact that without the garbage time last week, he hasn't really been involved completely. Every, he's getting the second most snaps, but he's not involved enough in this passing game that you want to roll him out there as cash. Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's how I treated Aguilar last week, as I said on the show that I would play him in cash and probably try to fade him in tournaments. And I feel like Terry McLaurin is probably the guy that you have, you should have more safety. And I mean, he set an NFL record. He's not going to continue this, but he means five catches and a touchdown and like 50 yards is, is how he started his first three games on a very mediocre team with a poor quarterback, right? So he's, he's at least the guy to throw the ball to. And I think Richardson is at $3,700 on DraftKings. It's one of those guys that I think if you're looking for a wide receiver at under 4K is just to save you some cash. He, he certainly stands out as one of the better ones. All right. So where else are you looking then, Joe? Yeah. I mean, you mentioned Keenan Allen. Um, I think that that's another mistake. Uh, last week is just get, I got really on. Uh, kind oh, of I thought I was about to say, why? Hold on. <laughs> What's up? No, I thought saying, you were like, saying me as a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> well, the mistake was that I just got so locked in on the Zach Ertz kind of lineup construction, just paying up a tight end, that I, I kind of uh, didn't try enough teams with Keenan Allen, and he was drastically underpriced relative to his target share. Like I mentioned the weighted opportunity thing. It's basically just uh, how deep his targets are, how large of a target share he has, and, and Keenan Allen is just destroying everyone right now And that. That's kind of how we got on Mike Evans last week as well, and now he's all the way at up at 7,100. So, um, yeah, I think Keenan Allen is – it's really interesting if you're paying all the way up against Miami. Uh, massive team total there, of course. Um, it's really hard to project him for any less volume um, until we maybe get uh, Melvin Gordon back, which will be interesting uh, here in a couple of weeks, hopefully. More for you, Chris. Well, I, I wonder what the ownership is going to be on a guy like Tyler Lockett. <laughs> like Tyler Lockett still, I mean, his price kind of still jumps up, especially on FanDuel. I know you only get the half point for the catch, but after week one, I, you know, there were some concerns out there, but 26 I targets. I can tell you where FanShare has him as, as of today. Yeah, share it. Number three. Number three. Yeah, I, I figured it would be pretty high. I mean, I really like Keenan Allen. He leads in every basically every category, right? Yards, receptions, targets, great matchup, of course. You're obviously going to have to spend up on him, but Lockett, I think there's a little bit of safety there as well especially with just the run game being so suspect like if Carson does fumble again in this game and Penny's not playing like it just could potentially mean another 50 throws for Wilson and it's going to be like a fast-paced game it's gonna be a lot of plays so I think he'd be silly to avoid Lockett even with that projected high ownership you know who he was tied with which is surprising to me is Sammy Watkins it just I, I thought people would be more off Sammy Watkins after the first couple of weeks of disappointment. I, and, but no, nope, they're I guess maybe I have to change my lineup and change my tune because you know how I play. I go GPP for a FanDuel lineup and uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to take Sammy Watkins at a high ownership percentage. That's for sure. Anybody else you guys want to talk about wide receiver wise? I, I, I'll bring in one that Joe and I mentioned before the show, Chris. I'm surprised you guys didn't mention it is Curtis Samuel, Curtis Samuel. And it's not the fact that I actually think he's better than DJ Moore going forward. This one game, it's only one game. We have a sample of Kyle Allen starting at quarterback. And for everybody out there talking about DJ Moore's lack of targets last week and the concern going forward is what if Kyle Allen likes Curtis Moore or Curtis Samuel more than DJ Moore, which is a certain concern. But it's also the fact that Curtis Samuel's price is just so cheap. And Chris and I have talked about this, Joe, on the podcast over the Athletic, is Houston's pass defense is quite poor. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that he's still at a spot. Like, a lot of these guys in that range just aren't really – their their prices aren't moving, and I, I'm I'm definitely in on that. I think that last week was a, a great spot to, to go to him. And, and this week, like, yeah, I think he makes a ton of sense against Houston, um, especially if, like, people are going to kind of jump off of that just because they think it's a tougher matchup. Uh, on the road, I guess, but I'm, I'm with you. Houston really hasn't shown me a ton this year, especially in their secondary, kind of in that rough price range. Like, what do you think about the the Cardinals wide receivers? They they still seem like they're they're underpriced to me. I mean, we love that game. So, where, where are you guys landing on the Cardinals guys right now? Um, on both of them. What about you, Chris? Yeah, for sure. I mean, like Fitz definitely in cash, and Kirk is, I think, a guy that you take some shots on in tournaments. So, yeah, they're they're certainly both in play. Same price on Fanduel too. Yeah, very affordable, both of them. I, another guy who's a little bit more expensive, but we we should just give him the respect that he deserves is Cooper Cup. Like Cooper Cup just seems to be. You know, it's it's very impressive coming off that significant knee injury, and it's clear they're not throwing the ball to Todd Gurley. I mean, he's got like four catches in four games and or three games and. 
Cooper Cup is the guy in the red zone for Jared Goff. It's he's been that guy for Jared Goff since these two were playing together, and we saw it last week two red zone touchdowns for him. So I mean, I think he out of all the Rams, and that's a high total too. It's like flirting with fifty. So out of all the Rams wideouts, I mean, Cup is the guy that I think you can trust the most. I mean, Woods hasn't has been very disappointing, and Cooks has got those big boomer bust games. So I like Cup a lot. You know what I'm going to do. What about your boy, Kenny Galladay, Chris? Well, I wanted to bring him up. I was going to bring him back up in tournaments. And recency bias is such a big thing in fantasy. Like, I'm, I'm assuming most people will just go to Marvin no. Jones now. He's he's right he's right he's behind Tyler understood. Lockett. People are back in. It's the Chiefs. It's you got, yeah. I think it's just the – I think people are so trained at this point in fantasy to see the Chiefs and start the offensive players automatically and then anybody who's facing them, period. Yeah, well, it makes sense, right? I mean, Stafford's going to have to throw the ball. Like, you, you could say that you can have success against KC, and that could be your game plan. Like, we're going to run the football with on Johnson and give him some touches, and, and the Chiefs are allowed, I think, the sixth most rushing yards to backs. Like, you could say all that. It's, it's, it's nice to hear. But at the end of the day, Mahomes is going to throw a touchdown like two passes. So you're just going to be forced to throw the football. And Stafford has had some games before where he's, you know, been forced to take shots downfield with two of his weapons in Jones and, and Galladay. I think the bigger question is, do we see Hawkinson get more involved or is he just going to continue to block and not be a factor? Because I've seen a lot of buzz with him, and it's like I don't know if I can go there with him. I, I just I like Stafford so, and his two wide outs, but I'm a little hesitant on Hawkinson. Well, I'll, I'll get Joe's take on this because my take for Hawkinson is in seasonal fine DFS this week. It's a complete fade for two reasons: is one, I'm not starting him cash because he spends 50 percent of the time blocking, and when he runs route, they're all in the flats. He, but he is getting red zone targets, but that's where I don't want to play him in tournaments because people are playing him in tournaments and without a touchdown, he needs touchdowns. Fortunately, he's getting a look in the red zone, but because there's so much of that risk and he's one of the five highest projected tight ends, I can't do it. In seasonal, I'll do it, but I think I'm a fade on both cash and tournaments for Hawkinson this week. I kind of like him actually this week, especially at his price. Like, I, I mean, he, like you said, he is running routes. I mean, even if they are kind of shorter routes, I mean, but only it's 50% a- of the time. Yeah, I mean, I still think that this is a game. Well, here, we okay, well, let's talk to. about because we're talking we're talking cash. Let me ask you this, Joe, mm-hmm. since we're on it, because we're talking about a three hundred dollar and a two hundred dollar difference. It, it, w- shouldn't we just be disly, 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 disly? Yeah, I mean, I mean, he's going to be the the massive chalk at tight end. If we haven't made that clear, it's not like uh, <laughs> like uh, it's going to be even close between him and T.J. Hawkinson, uh, Holkinson, isn't that what we called him in week one? Oh yeah, you called him Holkinson. Yeah, yeah we <laughs> might have to we. we might have to retract that at this point. <laughs> After yeah, one, I, mean, but, I think Disley is probably Disley. the guy, but if you're looking for a pivot, I think you make some sense. As a pivot, I can see that. I still, don't, I'm still not that big of a fan. But Chris, I, I mentioned this on our podcast. This is great, Joe. So if you took the second most fantasy points allowed team, which is the Chargers, to tight ends, and you add Zach Ertz, as in just add in Zach Ertz, like he just played this invisible game and add him into their points, they still fall four points short of what Arizona's given up already. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, 76 fantasy points at tight ends and a half point setting and the next closest Tampa Bay at 45. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I agree. I mean, you probably need to think elsewhere in tournaments, like maybe one or two of your lineups with with Disley. But I mean, obviously, everything is it's right there in front of you. Every single tight end, including Hawkinson, has had just a monster game against Arizona. Nick Vanette is traded from this team. So, again, I mentioned all the, the, the issues running the football. I mean, Disley is it's hard not to lock him in at thirty six hundred dollars. Like, I, like he's a cash game play. So then are either one of you paying up cash wise for Ingram or Waller? Definitely. I will. I mean, yeah, I, I think that that's totally fine. Ingram in particular is, is the one I think is the most enticing. I mean, the upside that he shows is the upside of a wide receiver. Like a guy that made that play like last week, like that's the kind of upside you pay up for a tight end. I mean, Kelsey's all the way at seventy two hundred. It's such a big drop off to Evans or to Evan Ingram in in that game where a lot of people are going to go the McLaurin route. Um, I, I think I think without Saquon and someone's got to get the ball there. Right. I, I think that he's a guy that makes a ton of sense in the, the kind of mid range there. Yeah. I agree with so, that. I like Ingram more too. Let's move to quarterbacks. And do you guys want to take a guess who the number one projected owner cor- or owned corn court? Oh my God. Owned quarterback. Good God. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> Hulkerson. <yeah. laughs> it's got to be Daniel Jones. It yeah. is Daniel Jones. Yeah, I'm not surprised, <laughs> this is, man. This is, this is so ridiculous. All right. This is crazy. I'm assuming you guys are not going Daniel Jones in cash. Uh, I mean, I don't mind it. Stop. I don't Stop. mind it. Why? 
I mean, I, I at his price at fifty three hundred dollars, people were talking about Allen in cash last week. Why? Because he was like four K, and you can do whatever you want right. with your lineup. If I'm gonna play him, it's gonna be cash. Especially hearing what you just told me, I don't want to play him in a tournament when he's the highest owned quarterback. No, no chance. Like I'll I'll fade because that every day. I'll, but I'll spend the extra eight hundred bucks and go get Russell Wilson against the Cardinals. If because you can, I know who if you Wilson can is. do that, but that's eight hundred dollars. Like it's not like that's a that's a. That's it's only five hundred on Vandal. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if His, you're Daniel if you're Jones' price is seventy three hundred dollars on Fanduel. Come on, I, I know. <laughs> it's like it's, but that's affordable. You know what I mean? Like oh, after that, who, who, no I, I mean, you could go to Stafford. I, I guess like on Fanduel, it's a little bit cheaper there. Like there are some quarterbacks that you can plug in. Um, I'll but put it this way: Here you go, Chris. If we if like Jones, Jeffrey and Ingram, why no, wouldn't no, we like hold Jones? On. Hold on. Oh, because this is the same argument for that. people. Oh, I'm glad you said that. I'm not trying to come after you. I'm actually glad you asked that question because people have said similar things like somebody in. And I'm not trying to say like, oh, go look at my seasonal articles or anything. But somebody asked the question is like, well, how can you call Paul Richardson a sleeper, have Terry McLaurin as top 25, but Case Keenum's only QB 16 or wherever he is. And it's because it's the Jared Goff argument. Like Jared Goff has such a targeted volume of where things go that the players can produce and he can still not be a top 12 quarterback because it's all concentrated in three wide receivers. Like if it's all concentrated in Terry McLaurin and then Paul Richardson and Vernon Davis just only does a handful and then there's nobody else involved, he can throw for 250 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Both of those wide receivers be great plays, but Case Keenum still being mediocre. That's it's a really I, I want people to understand that because they're like, where's the math come from? Well, the math trickles down and the math always trickles down. So I wanted to say this about Daniel Jones, though, Chris, and I, I was, I'm going to see Joe's reaction on video here. If Daniel Jones finishes as a top five quarterback this week, I will buy a Daniel Jones jersey. Yikes. <laughs> well, start ordering. <laughs> I mean, this is QB2 last week in his first NFL game. He faced the Buccaneers, and he still And he's almost facing through. the Washington Redskins. Did we not just watch what Mitch Trubisky did in the first half? Like, this guy couldn't throw a football five feet and make a completion all I year. I understand. And he had a heck of a half just throwing to Taylor Gabriel. So I have no problem actually with Jones and cash. I know it seems crazy, but yeah, I, I will go there and I'll fade him. Entirely. Joe, do you want to jump in I mean, here? I, I think he's a good play. I also don't think he's 4k like, like last week when we were talking about going all the way down. But I mean, I think there's something we said for, at least if you're pairing him with someone like the giants target share is just so thin right now that at least, you know where it's going. There's a lot of value in that. We were, right, we were talking about the Chiefs before how it's like so hard to target what, what to do, at least in single entry with the Chiefs, because you, I mean, you have no idea. Like Watkins still has had like an amazing target share, but he hasn't had that blow up game. It's all these other guys that have been. But I mean, for the Giants, we have a pretty good idea of where he's going to be going. Yeah, so the, you would never play a naked Daniel Jones. That's what I'm saying. Just it's not sexy. Right. <laughs> it is not <laughs> sexy at all. But you are not you are not in agreement with Russell Wilson. So I'm assuming you're on Russell Wilson. No, I mean, I, I like Russell Wilson quite a, quite a bit. How is, it, how is it hard to like a guy against the Cardinals basically ever? I, I feel like I've been playing like the other side of the Cardinals um, pretty much every week. I mean, he's got the rushing equity we like. Like uh, Lockett's pretty expensive if you're going to pair with someone. But if you're playing Disley, like makes sense to have Russ for sure. I mean, I think that his floor has got to be right up there. I mean, his price is, is definitely within range he's 6100 like he's obviously a lot more expensive than someone like daniel jones but he's kind of in a no man's land if you're paying up for like lamar jackson at 6900 on DraftKings, like russ is all the way down to 61 you can just do a lot more with your team and i think he's going to end up being right there as far as ownership uh as daniel jones in cash games i'm so glad you brought up that name because that was the last i was gonna actually bring up two quarterbacks and maybe if you both say these are tournament then we'll hit the tournament drop and move into tournaments. But the point was going to be is Lamar Jackson and Deshaun Watson have both dropped down to where they're behind Matt Ryan and Jared Goff in projected ownership this week. Hmm. Interesting. That's Are you insane. no yeah. cash for you guys? Are you not even thinking cash? I mean, I don't understand how like Lamar Jackson doesn't still con- come into the c- cash conversation. Yeah, I think he does. I-, I do have some respect for Cleveland's defense and Dallas some pressure, but absolutely. I mean, he's he's averaging 30, 30 points you know, per game. It's just two fewer than Mahomes, and there's a big drop off in terms of price. So yeah, I like both of those guys, and they should you know something needs to be said for them to play to play them in tournaments too, because everybody always just wants to find value and drop down. I mean, Mahomes is coming in with a cheap owner ownership and he's just crushing it and like just play those two guys <laughs> you know what you're gonna get with both of them at this point it seems like 30 fantasy points 
Yeah, I mean, like he, he completed just over 50% of his passes last week, but I mean, he saved it just by having 46 yards and a touchdown on the ground, right? So like at that point, like, I don't know if like what we've, we have probably haven't seen his floor yet, maybe, but I mean, I, we definitely know that the ceiling's there um, and cash games, like I, it, it depends on how roster construction ends up going. Like if you want to go the route of paying down for, for Wayne Gallman, paying down for Disley, like you can definitely make it work paying up at quarterback. I, I wonder if that's his floor, like 21 DraftKings points, like zero touchdowns last week, ran <laughs> one in, like Joe says, if he does struggle like that, where he has like a 50% completion rate and he's, he's not hitting anybody in the air, he's probably just going to use his legs and run and that would hit his floor. So I just, I wonder if 21 points is his floor. It's and scary. that's what it's makes scary. him so appealing. All yeah. right, so let's let's uh, let's talk some tournament plays then. You down with GPP? Joe, you go first. Running backs, where are you looking? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that this like running back this week, it, it feels like there's just not a lot of directions to go for me compared to compared to normal. I think that carry on Johnson's interesting if everyone's going to kind of um, attack this KC game. I, I don't typically go there for a guy that hasn't shown as much upside in the passing game, but 6,500 just it feels like maybe it's gone a little bit too far on carry on. I think you can probably project him for for close to 20 touches in this game in particular. I think they're going to have the ball a lot um, against KC. Nice team total at home. I, I think that carry on is, is a decent price on, on DraftKings 5,400. I think he's one of the guys that I think makes sense in GPPs. Yeah, I like that call a lot. As, as much as I'm talking to Stafford and Jones and Galladay, I, I like that as well. I mean, I think he'll catch a few more passes in the backfield. I mean, he didn't have a great game last week against the Eagles, but I mean, 20 carries and a catch, like it was a tough matchup for him. I, another guy I like in that kind of in that price range, too, is we all saw Thursday night Leonard Fournette just struggle. And, you know, every run was like negative, negative. Like all his runs came, all his yards came on the one run, but he's still getting a lot of work and he's, he's just touching the ball a ton, like 16 catches through three games. This, this guy's on pace for a heavy workload in the passing game. And I like his price six K and against Denver a team has allowed the most rushing touchdowns so far. It's not, it's not as bad as a matchup as, as most people think when they look at the Broncos. So I think he checks in at a decent price and probably a low ownership. I don't think anybody's on, I don't think he's on anybody's radar. No, probably. Let me. Now nah, I've already switched no, down my page. So too bad. Down page five. Probably. <laughs> page five. I, Chris, do you want to guess where I'm going? Um, you should know. I have an idea. Mark Ingram or Chris Carson? No. Montgomery. Neither. One of the ones I was going to say. Nope. Jeez. Still no. Come on, you should know. We how many shows do we do together? Uh, what, what do people think Todd my Gurley? first name is? No. What do people think my first name is? And it's not really my first name. Oh, man, Jacob, Josh Jacobs, oh, yeah, Jacob. Josh oh, of Jacobs, course you're going Josh Jacobs, man. Josh Jacobs, who was on an IV bag, had four IVs plugged into him during the game, that's still it. ran 10 routes. And people are like, oh, that's a, this is clear that John Gruden doesn't want to use him. Who came out and said, we're getting him back more involved now that he's back to 100 percent. He's six thousand dollars against the Colts. He's in a lot. And he is in my tournament lineup later today when we get to it. It could be a game script that favors him. I don't expect it to be a blowout, especially if Ty doesn't play. So if they're not exactly. down in the game, then he can get a few touches. I don't. I don't hate that call. Fifty one hundred dollars is not a bad spot. I just. I'd like to see him catch a few balls. And I'm not saying he can't, and he's not going to. But that is the one reason I just feel like he's he can't hit his ceiling. I just don't know where his ceiling is. Let's talk wide receivers then. I mean, I think the guy that we haven't talked about is Hollywood Brown, right? Like, I think if we could, yeah, he had nine targets last week, only two catches, but the targets he was seeing were just deep. Um, like his, the air yards that he left on the field last week is pretty crazy. I, I do think that Chris makes an awesome point, though. Like, if if Cleveland's going to get pressure this week, maybe it, it doesn't make sense to go to a guy that is going to rely on some of those deeper targets. Uh, but I think that he's still in a decent spot um, to at some point have another blow up game I think he's a really talented guy and, and it, it's another guy that like originally we're just saying that Lamar was only gonna gonna lean on uh on his tight end but I do think that Hollywood Brown is a guy that's probably still underpriced relative to where he's been seeing targets yeah he he's somebody that we should probably just mention every week in tournaments just because of his upside he's that typical boomer bust guy like the Deshaun Jacksons of the world who can just win you a tournament with with two catches he he really could so Definitely interested in him. And, you know, a lot of the guys we've already kind of talked about, I mean, 
I'm not going to sit here and say Julio Jones is awesome. Everyone knows Julio Jones is awesome, but I, I certainly like him again in this spot at home. He's He's just been a touchdown machine so far this season, and they're just not really doing a whole lot on the ground game. So I certainly like him. And then Jake, like Sammy Watkins, I think all of those guys like Robinson and Hardman like should be in play. I think you should take shots on all of them. Like Sammy's obviously my favorite, and I think the second guy I would go to is probably Hardman um, just because, you know, what we saw last week. I mean, he didn't look like he's doing anything. All of a sudden, he has an 83-yard catch he takes to the house. Like, it's just so explosive in that offense. And it's it's a high total, 54 points. You're going to see some points in the game. You want to talk about beasts. You didn't bring up the beast of beast of beasts who disappointed last week. And all of a sudden, people are like, oh, forget about him. <laughs> you know, one disappointing week. DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, right. If you're going to if you're gonna pay up in tournaments, I mean, he's the most expensive, which is going to push people off of him, actually. I'm looking at his projected ownership, and it's mid-pack because of the price. And then, as you mentioned, Chris, it's recency bias. People recency bias one week, and they're off with hint, hint, with somebody I'm going to be going to at tight end. Yeah, and they can't run the football there. So, I mean, more throws. Oh, wait, you, 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 you don't think don't a lot of Carlos Hyde? But, yeah, I mean, if Hopkins is going to come with a low ownership, we know what he can do. And again, yeah, like you said, Jake, recency bias is a thing. It was a, it was a w- rough game, of course, for him. But what I like the most about Houston is... I guess it's not very appealing if you're a Texans fan. It's just, it just can't run the football. So they're going to continue to throw it. And if Hopkins is going to come with a ownership that's going to be in the middle of the pack, they consider it a win if you have him. I love Will Fuller, too. 4500 just His price hasn't moved. He's still like I, I know Jake hates Will Fuller. I can see it in his <laughs> eyes right now. But I, I think that he's a guy that I'm going to continue to fire at. I thought he was a great play last week. I still see in the usage that I want to see for a wide receiver. 4500 I think he's still very much in play. It's I don't hate him for tournaments. At some point, he's going to hit. It's just I, I, it's kind of the Jared Cook syndrome. It's like I don't want to keep putting him on a lineup every single week until it finally happens because it's going to happen. Actually, I think Jared Cook is very intriguing if he was on this slate for this. Or, you know, he is on this slate. So if you want to roll out Jared Cook, Chris, you know this. This is the time like Jared Cook has not has gone as far as being benched last week. And now people are dropping him because it was nothing. This is the Jared Cook. This is the three touchdown Jared Cook week. I don't know. I don't believe it. You told me that last week. I'm not buying it. I know because it's it's like we got to wait. We got well, we weren't kind of at the final stretch yet. People weren't ready to drop him outright. Right. I, I could tell. But Fuller is one of those guys. It's just like Brown, right? He's that boomer bust guy. And and Jake, you're dead on. And you know this when you just said it that you're not going to be on him until you see it. It's going to be too late. It's it's that one game. Like eventually, he's going to have that game. I mean, he had all of those games with Watson last year. It's coming. It's coming. I'm actually trying to find, dude. Will Fuller. <laughs> Will Fuller, or not Will Fuller, Jared Cook isn't even in the top 150 for projected ownership. Yeah, I mean, it pr- probably has something to do with the just the Sunday night game, but you have to get creative if, if you want him in your lineup. Yeah, uh, so in any case, let's uh, move to, since we're talking about, I was going to say quarterbacks, but since we're talking about tight ends, let's talk about tight ends. And I'm going to say, I just kind of hinted at it with the recency bias, but the recency bias for tight end is Mark Andrews. And the best part about Mark Andrews is if you like more Jackson, to your point a little bit before Joe, he still got seven targets in what was a banged up game. And he still has that Q tag right next to his name, which is going to make people go, Oh, that's doubly why the disappointment from last week. Plus that. And that's why his projected ownership is bottom. Oh, I mean, we're talking, he's down by, let's go check. He's down by Eric Ebron and Delaney Walker. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, we were just talking about with Hollywood Brown, too, if we're right and Cleveland ends up getting to Baltimore a little bit, it would make sense that Mark Andrews would definitely continue to have a, a huge role, uh, kind of a security blanket type thing for Lamar. Uh, nice team total. Like, there's not really a lot you can say uh, negative about uh, about Mark Andrews. I think that he's a, he's a great play at 5K. I, I will say that Evan Ingram, just 700 more, is, is a little bit enticing. But, I mean, it doesn't get much better than than Andrews. I love that his price is going down, to be compl- completely honest, just because I still think he's one of those elite athletes that we want at tight end. Yeah, he's definitely the number one option in the Baltimore passing attack, too. And even $200 more on DraftKings for Waller. I mean, 29 targets, third among tight ends. And one behind yeah, it's tough to get off Waller Eric's. on DraftKings. Yeah, it's super tough. Like, he's just in a, in a good spot. All right, quarterbacks? Tournament quarterbacks? Um, I mean, is it Lamar Jackson, Joe? I mean, we've yeah. said him a million times. Yeah, I mean, he's just, he's going to be in my lineup just because of that. I think uh, he, his price is is definitely tougher to get to, but I mean, he's like nine hundred cheaper still than Patrick Mahomes on FanDuel. So I think that he's still very much in play. Um, I mean, just that rushing equity that he has. So I'll, I'll just keep going on the Lamar train and just kind of work things out from there. You know, somebody I'm, I I'm going to take a shot on, and it doesn't actually feel great. Um, 
is Jared Goff. And I know a lot of people are out on Jared Goff. And if you look at DraftKings and you see his price 63 and all of those quarterbacks are in his range, averaging like at least 25 DK points. I mean, I don't think anyone's going to go to go to Goff. I think he's a better play on FanDuel. He's a little bit cheaper. But if you look at last year, and I know the offense is not the same this year as last year, but just last year at home, he was just so much better. He averaged 342 yards at home, 22 touchdowns and three picks. On the road, he averaged 243, 10 TDs and nine interceptions. The run game just doesn't seem to be there. I like the three weapons. I'm not in on the Bucks defense. I mean, Jake, we talked about about uh, Danny Dimes Jones, whatever anyone's calling him these days, having that good Danny game. Dimes. And what did you say? Well, he did it against the Bucks defense. Exactly. So I think Goff could... <laughs> I think this could be one of those games where Goff just throws three to four touchdowns. I think it's very possible. And I, I mean, I'd love to know where he is on the ownership list. I would say he's like definitely outside the top 12 quarterbacks. Like he's not. A no, I mentioned him before. He's, oh, uh, he's he, high. He, Come on. Yeah, remember, I, I mentioned it before. And I think he uh, was, that was the whole point. He was in front of Lamar Jackson and uh, uh, Kyler Murray and Deshaun Watson. He hey, is Jared Goff. Tune a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Jared I, Goff is, is eighth. Actually, he's tied for seventh wow. with Case Keenum. I thought maybe his DraftKings price at sixty three hundred dollars would just really shy people away, like just to go down. The Buccaneers, yeah, and people still love Jared Goff. They and, just love him. They just love his offense. These guys are going to be above twenty percent anyway. We don't need to worry about it. Right. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, and that's, it's, you always do have to remember that. All right, so let's get into our stacks. Although I feel like, I mean, we've already mentioned my stack almost in full completion, but we'll do it anyway. And I guess I'll go first with mine. <laughs> Stack attack. Yeah, so my stack includes the defense. I have Lamar Jackson. I have Marquise Brown. I have Mark Andrews. And I have the Ravens defense as my stack for the week, Joe. I like it. Uh, I mean, of course, like I think that's going to be probably you're, you're stealing like half my lineup right now, but um, <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in on Lamar this week. I think that is a great spot to go back to him. You want, take, you want to take the reins on the next one? I was going to yeah. give Chris the second one. I think I took like the first spot last week. So I think Chris is kind of. Oh, okay. Well, then here. Chris can go first. All right. I'll, um, I'll, I'll go with the giants. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I mean, I'm going to do this in cash. I am going to try to fade Jones in tournaments, especially hearing what you said, Jake, about the ownership. I think that's nuts, but I think, it, you know, in, in cash, It'll save you some money if you want to spend up elsewhere with Jones and Shepard and Ingram. I like those the price on those three guys. And what I saw last week, I just feel like, and Joe alluded to it, the target share is pretty thin there. There's two guys in this offense without Barkley. It's Shepard and it's Ingram. So I think you can trust them in cash. I like that call a lot. I'm actually going to go, I think, a little bit different. Uh, Deshaun Watson, like we mentioned before, uh, DeAndre Hopkins is a great play, but I'm actually going to go Watson to Fuller, bring it back with Christian McCaffrey. Like The price that that Fuller's at right now, it allows you to play guys like Christian McCaffrey, who I'm going to have on on my team. I I would be very um, shocked if I didn't. All jokes aside, why not go Hopkins and Fuller with Watson? You could, but then it's going to limit what I can do at running back. And if I'm going to bring it back with someone on Carolina, I'd rather do it with Christian McCaffrey, I think. Okay. I was just, I was curious of that. Oh, by the way, before we get into our lineups, because we didn't even mention it, it was defenses for this week. Are we going to continue to roll out and try to pay up and find a way to get whoever's facing the Dolphins? Are we just going to keep doing that? I mean, I think it makes sense, but I, yeah, I don't know. I like paying that. You heard, I actually, it's not just a stack for the Ravens. I actually like paying down for the Ravens because the biggest issue for Baker Mayfield and the biggest issue for this offense is that the offensive line is terrible. Right. And if you want to go after somebody that's going to be in a game where you assume they're also going to pass and need to pass, this is what we talk about all the time in defenses is you want to look for an opportunity to get to the quarterback and get to a quarterback where the game is going to point towards passing because that means the turnovers and more sacks. The the Browns are going to keep passing. They're going to, and they're going to keep passing in this game, which means if Baker Mayfield can't get the ball out in one and a half seconds, as we've seen with the numbers, I, I, I'm really over the Ravens if you can't get up to the Chargers or even maybe the Patriots. Yeah, there's four defenses I wrote in the in the DFS pass. Ravens, one of them. Completion percentage for Baker, 56%. Five picks. Makes a lot of sense. They're going to be able to dial up some pressure. I feel the same way about the Rams against that weak offensive line at Tampa Bay that they'll be able to dial up some pressure. And I like the Patriots slightly more than the Chargers. I mean, they're just not allowing any points. They're first in sacks. They're first in picks. They've only allowed five points per game. And Josh Allen has had some issues as well. Fumble in the ball and throwing some picks so i think they'll be able to lock down john brown and which is i think is bad news for Allen. i love the the patriots call man because i think that the exactly what you just said they're going to be able to lock down 
John Brown and and then where where is Josh Allen at that point? Like he's probably going to keep firing, we would hope, but like this Patriots <laughs> defense is the real deal, especially since they're so close in price on FanDuel to the Chargers. On DraftKings it's a little bit more drastic, but uh the one right. I was going to mention you touched on as well, the Rams defense. So Jake was talking about how they want pass attempts on the other side. Like I'm I'm still going to keep targeting Jameis. Uh, I don't really respect this Tampa Bay offensive line whatsoever. Like this this uh, L.A. team, they're definitely going to get to the quarterback a little bit. And on FanDuel in particular, their price is, is really low compared to some of these other ones we're talking about. So I'm definitely interested in them. All right. Well, then let's finish things up and throw down here. DFS Battle Royale. I'll also go first on this one because I already gave you half my lineup. So <laughs> there's really not much left to plug in with those four Ravens. I liked your call. I had David Johnson. This is turn. You know me. I'm going tournaments. David Johnson. Josh Jacobs, Christian Kirk, Hopkins, and Dalvin Cook in the flex to go with all those Ravens. I, I, this is one of those times where I feel like this is like, man, I love this lineup so much. And then it's going to get Sunday afternoon and be like, how did I only score 105 points? <laughs> yeah, what could go wrong? <laughs> yeah, it's usually the lineups that make you sick that, that do good. Um, I'll go next. And <laughs> no surprise, Daniel Jones is my quarterback <sighs> on Fandle, yes. $7,300. <laughs> Dalvin Cook, David Johnson. I think we all were on the same page here with David, David Johnson. It's nice to hear you guys talk him up as well because he's in my lineup. My wide receivers are Sammy Watkins, Cooper Cup, and Kenny Galladay. I got Will Disley at the tight end positions, position. Sterling Shepard in as my flex, and then the Patriots defense. He went back to Galladay. I, I did, that. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right Let's go. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to get back on the Wolf Fuller train, I think. I think that that's the one uh, that makes the most sense to me as far as a guy that underperformed last week that I liked, but I'm not quite ready to miss out on that one yet. So maybe it's Chasey still just trying to chase that Wolf Fuller game, but uh, he's in my lineup. But I'm going to go with Lamar Jackson to Marquise Brown um, as my main stack. Uh, going to bring that. Um, back as well. Um, actually, no, I'm going to keep that with Lamar and, and Marquise Brown. Um, and then also have David Johnson in my lineup, Christian McCaffrey, Austin Eckler, Shocker, just paying up at running back everywhere. Um, I, I do think that Terry McLaurin is interesting on FanDuel as well, because everyone's going to play him on DraftKings. So that's one thing that I really like to do at wide receiver if I'm playing both sites is to kind of play the guy that is going to be far lower owned on the other side. His price is probably not as great, um, but I think he's interesting for tournaments. Uh, Will Disley, at tight ends, and then the Rams defense that I talked about before. I think they uh, they fit this lineup perfectly, um, and that's what I'm going to go with. I, I think that Lamar stack is the one that I'm going to kind of plant my flag on this week, though. Disley, so what can could we, go wrong with Disley? Uh, exactly. uh, zero receptions. Can, can we put one thing out? Look, I said that if Daniel Jones was a top five quarterback, that I would buy a jersey. Can we say that if Will Fuller bombs, you're never allowed to bring his name up on the show again, Joe? Or I have to wear a uh, Will Fuller jersey every week until it happens. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. You guys are going to be wearing jerseys next week. I got to figure out a guy. I, I, I don't wear jerseys. I just put them up behind me. Oh, I, buddy, I can't we're not, wait we're not to in see college, your, Chris. I can't wait to see your <laughs> Daniel Jones jersey. I'm. I, I'm what color are you going to It'll it'll be back here with my Deshaun Bayshawn Hamilton jersey that I, I don't put out until <laughs> Emmanuel away. Sanders goes away. Yeah. You freaking cyborg out there. But uh, once again, but you talk about the DFS pass a lot, Chris. Uh, my work's over there. Chris's is over there. If you want to save 10%, put in podcast as the code and you save there. And we'll be back next week, as always, to hopefully get you some more winnings. Uh, if you look at it, go to Joe Holka at Twitter and follow him there. To get some advice. Same Chris Meany for him and our own kid for myself. We hope you win a lot and we hope you enjoy the show. See you next time. Bye. Daniel Joe sucks. To another edition of the Fantasy Footballers DFS Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com.